Well, hi everyone, welcome aboard EV Nautilus. My name is Madison Dapsevich and I'm a communications lead for the NA142 cruise, which is a cruise dedicated to dual technology seafloor mapping. Joining me in the studio today is mapping coordinator, Aaron Hebron. Hey, Aaron. Hey, Maddie, how are you? I'm good. Uh, yeah, so we're just back in Honolulu after three weeks at sea, mapping the seafloor in Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. Uh, it's a World Heritage Monument, uh, encompasses more than a half million square miles of ocean waters. And in the monument, there's 10 islands and atolls of the, the Northwest Hawaiian Islands. Yeah, and what's unique about this mapping cruise, of course, is that the Ocean Exploration Trust was joined by scientists from NOAA and from the University of New Hampshire, which you're a graduate of as well. Yeah, that, that is true. Very recent <laughs> graduate from UNIH, CECOM. As part of the Dual Technology Testing Initiative, which was set out to determine how mapping systems aboard Nautilus may work in conjunction with those aboard what's the uncrewed autonomous surface vessel Drix. We spent several days mapping the, the shallow areas around an island known as Nihoa, which you'll show us here yeah. shortly. For a little bit of background, the Nautilus team uses a, a Kongsberg EM302 multi-beam echo sounder to map the seafloor. It's mounted to the hull of the ship and it's capable of efficiently and accurately mapping state-of-the-art maps covering those large areas of seafloor. Like you mentioned, we see the seafloor beyond what we see the horizon sometimes, <laughs> from <yeah>. the ship <laughs> sometimes. Um, right, so our uh, multi-beam echo sounder aboard the Nautilus can map the seafloor often um, between depths of 500 and 5,000 meters, right? That's sort of the go-to. That's our, yeah, our preferred depth range. Um, and just like we can map in shallow waters, the ROVs could dive in shallow waters, but we prefer to get them to depths where uh, a scuba diver can't go so that they're adding to, to knowledge that can't be obtained in any other way. Absolutely. So Aaron, why don't you tell us a little bit more about the areas mapped and sort of, you know, what that means to our understanding of this area? I'm looking at the data in a software program called Flader Mounts that lets us visualize our, our multi-beam data as well as background data. If I turn off that background data and I'll, I'll just focus on the deep water data we collected first. So we transited out of Honolulu about three weeks ago. We always try to transit over areas that have no multi-beam coverage. So I selected this track line along some area that had some gaps. It took us quite shallow, as you can see. We came up to, uh, gosh, less than 100 meters on this part of it, and then continued on to the monument. And then uh, we went and investigated Nihoa. So we were splitting the time with Drix, and so we would go map our, our little hearts out every chance we got, usually overnight, in the deep part. So we. We're in along here. We mapped one seamount that had been partially mapped before, but we completed it on this expedition. So quite nice topography there. It's beautiful. Uh, it is, isn't it? Yeah. When you're looking at the data I'm talking about, uh, zero meters is white, shallow water is yellows, and it goes down through greens and blues with our deepest depths being about 5,000 meters. So we got this really nice seamount, uh, and then we got half of another seamount, which was so frustrating. <laughs> but, uh, we were just running out of time. We were hustling, trying to get as much data as we can, but we had to pull off this survey to get back to Nihoa to support the Drix team. Absolutely, right. And for this cruise, as we've both mentioned, we also brought along USB Drix. Drix is equipped with an EM2040, as Aaron mentioned. That's a multi-beam system that's used for the nearshore mapping. So KG Fairbairn is a USB scientist and engineer at the University of New Hampshire. KG is going to tell us a little bit more about Drix and what his team has accomplished during this cruise. Yeah, USV Drix is made of composite materials like carbon fiber, Kevlar, and fiberglass. It measures 25 feet long and weighs in at 3,500 pounds. It has a 38 horsepower, four cylinder diesel engine that allows Drix to max out its speed at a whopping 13 knots. What makes Drix so unique is its ability to one day map the seafloor on its own or in conjunction with a ship like Nautilus. We hope this will make mapping more accessible and less expensive in the long haul. Over the last three weeks, Drix collected 450 gigabytes of data. Much of the data consists of engineering logs that our partner Xblue and our UNH engineers like myself will use to improve the autonomous systems. Other data we've collected comes from Drix's Kongsberg EM2040 multi-beam seafloor mapping sonar. This system is considered a shallow water mapping multi-beam and is ideal for depths down to approximately 400 meters or over 1,300 feet. As part of this cruise, those systems allowed us to collect 122 square kilometers of data along 782 nautical miles. The overall goal of uncrewed vessels is to become more efficient than those with crewed vessels. 
Our goal is to cover more area and operate in seas that crewed vessels wouldn't. Autonomous systems are still under development and there are many challenges to overcome. Boats require a lot of maintenance. Multi-beam sonar and precision navigation systems are inherently complex and telemetry systems used for transmitting this data are very complex as well and almost never perform the same day to day. So at the end of the day, the real accomplishment is bringing Drix back to the Nautilus safely and collecting data that will contribute to our research in autonomous systems. Our team has learned many valuable lessons on this cruise. Most of those lessons were learned from situations that didn't quite go as planned, but offer new insight into how technology operates. For example, this cruise was Drix's first large multi-beam survey and also the first operation in open seas where we launched and recovered the vehicle in less than optimal sea states. Now we have a better understanding of what Drix can and kind of more importantly cannot accomplish. What's next? Our engineers at UNH will sit around a big table back in New Hampshire and come up with ideas about how to improve those systems that didn't quite work and we'll get ready for our next cruise as will we. Well, thank you so much for joining us for the 2022 expedition season so far. Nautilus will be taking a brief port break to do a little bit of maintenance and recollecting here. And for the next expedition, we'll be heading again back to Papahanaumokuakea, getting into some really unmapped areas. And we're really excited to get another month to try and fill in some of those gaps. A well-deserved break before another exciting expedition. That's well, right. Thank you, Erin. Thank you all so much. We'll see you soon.